few, we surrender our entire spirit, soul, and body unto you, Lord. Trusting, knowing you, loving you, depending totally on you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, the mighty, mighty Holy Spirit. Teach us, lead us, guide us, direct us. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said? Amen. 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 Well, we've been 13 lessons on the blood. This is the 14th. And so I pray that you have learned something. And that um, it's been a blessing to you to enrich your spiritual life and carry over so that the application of it would assist you, make you victorious, more victorious in your natural life. Praise the Lord. But today we're just kind of going to review a little bit and uh, we're going to conclude. So if you've already turned to 1 John, we're in chapter 5 and we're going to begin reading in 1 John chapter 5. Verses 6 through 8. This is he that came by water and blood. He came by blood. You see that? Even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. Now we've been talking about the blood these past few weeks. That's what we're still on. And that's what we're concentrating on. And it is the Spirit that bears witness because the Spirit is truth. Hallelujah. Verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, which is Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Verse 8. That's covenant language, by the way. Verse 8, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Yeah. Now we're going to conclude with this today, but let's just review a moment. In past lessons, we've learned that the life of the flesh is the blood. Remember that? Yep. The life of your flesh, all flesh, is the blood. It's found in Leviticus 17.11. You can turn there if you want, but uh, just jot it down because I'm not going to quote it this morning. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Second thing, we learned that through this blood, by Jesus taking on this blood, which we just read, he destroyed the power of the devil, yes. which is the fear of death for death. So through the blood, Jesus taking, partaking of that blood, hallelujah, he destroyed the power of the devil. Let's look at that one. That's a good one. Hebrews 2 and verse 14 says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Yes, yes. So Jesus' blood destroyed the power of the devil. The only power the devil has today is to deceive. Yeah. It's a deception. Other than that, he's stripped. Glory to God. But if he can get you to believe his lies, his symptoms, mm -hmm. his uh, evidence, mm -hmm. then he can wedge his way in. Yeah, right. yep. See, the world doesn't understand that. They just follow him hook, line, and sinker because he's the God of this world, the prince of the power of the air, Jesus said. So they just think that's the way it's supposed to be. And they think you're a little strange for thinking that you don't have to be sick right. or that you don't have to be broke. But we, we have that privilege because of the blood of Jesus Amen. destroying the power of the devil. Yes. Hallelujah. We also learned that he was payment in full 
for sin's damages. Remember we talked about he's the propitiation, mm -hmm. the expiation, the reparation, <laughs> all those words. <laughs> but what, what, what we're saying here is that he paid for the damages on my behalf from, from when I was in sin for my sins. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. They're paid for. Glory to God. That's found in Romans 3 and verse 25. Praise the Lord. I just jotted it down. We're not going to have time to go physically to all these scriptures. But you can research it later. Well, the blood is the guarantee of our inheritance. In other words, we have the Lord's last will and testimony. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Glory to God. Well, let's look at that one. Hebrews 9. Since you're in Hebrews anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Hebrews 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Verse 15, and for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, propitiation, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal, what? Inheritance. There it is. That's our inheritance. For where a testament is, a will, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator lives. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. So we see here that in the new covenant, the new testament, it's the will of God for you. You want to know God's will? Read your Bible. Hallelujah. I hear people say it all the time. I wish I knew the will of God. I'm trying to find the will of God. Read the Bible. The Spirit will quicken it to you. Hallelujah. It's whenever we hear these weird spirit telling us these things <laughs> that we get all wacky and out of left field following various um, impulses and uh, yeah, vain philosophies and things because it's got to be grounded in the Word. The, the Lord is not going to contradict Himself. Neither is He going to send you outside of the Word. Here is the will of God. Sealed with the blood of Jesus. Praise God. Well, He's also the surety of the new covenant. Hallelujah. Better promises. Right? We find that Hebrew, um, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 11.25 talks about when we're taking communion, we're partaking the blood of Jesus, yes. which is the blood of the New Testament. And also, since you're in Hebrews, look in Hebrews 13. I'm just trying to keep you there so we don't have to trim through the Bible so much this morning so we're, we'll run out of time. It goes quick. Hebrews 13, verse 20 says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Hallelujah. So Jesus' blood is the surety of the everlasting covenant. Hallelujah. Well, that brings us to the fact that that blood is eternal. It's not just a historical fact, meaning that uh, it's not just something that happened 2,000 years ago, but that blood still lives and speaks today. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So, that blood is eternal. Glory to God. We just saw it here, everlasting. Look, look back over in chapter 7 of Hebrews, verse 16.
And we're seeing that the Lord is being compared to Melchizedek. You remember him? Uh, the power of an endless life. Verse 16, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. That blood is eternal. Remember we discussed the fact that that blood was um, divine blood. Jesus' blood was divine blood. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. was actually uh, generated from the word being made flesh in the womb of Mary. Now, the, the, the blood mixing with Mary's womb would have been danger. Blood mixes with the womb of a mom while the baby is incubated there. Then there's a problem. you got to get her to the hospital. Hallelujah. So that blood is, is it, that's just an incubator in there, and the blood is the divinely generated from on high. It's God's blood. Hallelujah. Divine blood. Praise the Lord. So that blood is eternal. It's forever, and it's forever working in us. Glory to God. Well, the blood is a witness, or the blood speaks. Remember? The blood was crying from the ground to God because of Cain and Abel. Yes. Speaking. Blood speaks. Hallelujah. We read that uh, the blood is a witness in our opening scripture, 1 John 5 and 8, that there are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and then the blood. But the witness has to say something. <coughs> Hallelujah. If I'm called to the witness stand... I can't just sit there, smile. The judge wants to hear something. Praise the Lord, right? The blood is a witness. It speaks. We learned that we must apply the blood. It's not enough to just learn about the blood, know the benefits of the blood, but we must put it in application. And the blood, as much as it signifies life, it also signifies death. So therefore I must die to myself to enter into these benefits and this covenant with God. Hallelujah. We find that in Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ. If they crucify you, you're bleeding. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's good news, isn't it? Yeah. Then we learn that there needs to be a sprinkling of the blood. Yeah. There was a sprinkling of the blood many times in the Old Testament. But how do we sprinkle the blood in the New Testament since it's the Lord's blood? It's not the blood of animals that we come and kill. There's only one sacrifice instead of many sacrifices. Hallelujah. How do I sprinkle that blood? Well, we learned how to sprinkle the blood is by our words. Right. Praise the Lord. Remember we said that the root word for bless, the root English word for bless was blood. So when we go and bless somebody, bless you, with our words, we're really saying to them, sprinkling them with the blood. Right. All right. But why, why? Well, because of all the benefits of the blood, yes. the protection. The, the, the victory, the, the divine sanctification, the healing, the cleansing. Hallelujah. Well, that's a blessing, isn't it? Sure. So, we find that in Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their life until the death. So, we see here the sprinkling of the blood is saying it. We also found that in Romans 3 and 25 by declaring it. Remember, we talked about declaring what the blood has done for us. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We covered a lot of territory in 13 weeks, didn't we? Yeah. Well, there's more. Praise God. So, we learned also that the blood, Jesus said, was the blood of the new covenant. Matthew 26 and 28. He's going to have the, the Lord's Supper. This is the, the blood, the wine, yes, is the blood of Jesus, or it's his blood. Hallelujah. We also learned that to plead the blood, we, we looked at that topic, 
To plead the blood is to make our plea before the courts of heaven, being the blood. Now, this still confuses people. I have people that ask me about this because we're so used to thinking of plead as one, one way. To plead is, it can be to beg, but not with the blood. I'm not pleading with God for anything as far as begging Him. Okay? You have to understand that. If you're pleading with Him in regards to the blood, then you're not in faith. There's something wrong. Because we're not beggars. We know who we are in Christ. We know our authority in Christ. And so when we enter the throne room by the blood of Jesus with boldness, hallelujah, then we can let our request be known and we know that those requests, when he hears us, First John says, when he hears us, and when I know that he hears me, I know I have the petitions I desire of him. This is the confidence that I have in him. That if I ask anything according to his will, I know that he hears me. And if I know that he hears me, then I know that I have the petitions I desire of him. Right? And so therefore, I'm not begging him. I don't have to beg him. So I'm not pleading with him, oh God, please, you know the trouble I've seen. <laughs> I don't have to do that. I used to think I had to do that. I used to think if I bawled and squalled at the altar for a while, I'd finally get God's attention if I was loud enough and shed enough tears that maybe then he would reach down and do something. <laughs> How long is that period of time you have to be up here doing that? Who knows? Okay. Because it's not it's not applicable. You may have to be there a long time. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm not talking about pleading the blood as if begging God to apply the blood in that situation. What I am doing is entering my plea in the courtroom of heaven when any charge is laid against me. That's how I answer. The devil says he's sick. Look at him. He's going to die. Uh -huh. Why? Well, you remember what you did. You, you brought it on yourself. You are a terrible person. I mean, these are lying thoughts that the devil gives you. Yeah, uh -huh. mm -hmm. And instead of up there crying, oh, Lord, I know I was bad. I'm terrible. Please. <laughs> Let the blood cleanse me. <laughs> no. You say, Father, he says, how do you answer those charges, Joe? Say, Father, I plead the blood. That's my defense. Hallelujah. That's all I got to say. That took care of it all, right? Right? Praise God. And so, Father says, because of the blood, you're delivered. You're set free. Oh, glory to God. If you'll just get hold of this, crazy. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, look at Hebrews 9, since you're in Hebrews, if you're still in Hebrews. Hebrews 9 and verse 14. We saw that the blood means not only death to self, as far as the outside goes, but it's got to be a cleansing of the conscience, a cleansing of the inner man. Hallelujah. Death to the old and a new creation, a new life. Hebrews 9 and verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. What that's saying is that I'm saved, but now that blood, that eternal blood come by, that works all the time in us, is working deep inside me to cleanse me from anything that, any desires, anything that's contrary to the will of God, to go in His way, to live that new life, to be in communion with Him 24-7. It says it right here, purge your conscience from dead works. What are dead works? Anything that's outside of the faith life. To serve the living God. 
So that blood is purging me, cleansing me, digging deep at the work of the blood. Not, not your neighbor, by the way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> it's God doing it. <laughs> cleansing down deep inside here. What? To inspire me to live holy like he lives holy. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. To get rid of anything that's dead, any death. Get it off of me. Right. Mm. Lord Jesus. So let's go back to our scripture. I mean, that was just a review. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I'm going to preach. First John chapter 5. Some of you are laughing. Some of you are getting up and leaving. I don't know why. All right. First John chapter 5. Let's read it again. Verse 6 through 8. This is he that came by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. Yes. And it is the Spirit, notice the three, that bear witness because it, the Spirit is truth. Yeah. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Mm -hmm. There are three that bear witness in earth. The Spirit, mm -hmm. the water, the blood. blood. These three agree mm -hmm. in one. Hallelujah. Well, the Spirit has called us to witness on earth. Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost comes on you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Unto the uttermost parts of the earth. We're called by the receiving of the Holy Spirit to witness. Glory to God. Well, if you'll notice here, you have Spirit, water, and blood. Each of these are made up of two effects or two components or two, a two-fold effect. The Spirit, in that the Spirit regenerates us and then revives us. I mean, <laughs> continual. Now, you find that in Titus 3. Look in Titus. Praise the Lord. Now, I know Titus is in the New Testament, and I'll find him in a minute. Ah, there he is. Titus, chapter 3, verse 5 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Now, look at this twofold. By the washing, glory to God, yeah. of regeneration, that's salvation, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Okay? So there is a washing, and then there's a renewing, in, as far as the Spirit goes. Okay, well, what about the water? Well, we have the same effect in water. Water is compared to, uh, I mean, water is... is has two functions, two effects. One would be that it would cleanse you, yes. right? Mm -hmm. The other would be that it revives you when you drink it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can be cleansed, but if you don't get any water to drink, you're going to die, <laughs> right? I mean, you you'll, you you'll be a clean, dead person, but <laughs> you won't be much good on earth. You have to have it to keep you going. Right? right? Yes. Well, we see that in the spirit. We just read it. The regeneration and then the renewing. The continual flow of life. We see it with water. Hallelujah. <coughs> and then we see it in the blood. Glory to God. I'm trying to condense it a little. Well, look in John chapter 6. The drinking of water, keep in mind we're talking about the spirit, the water, and the blood, okay? In particular, the blood today. But I'm going to compare water with the blood here for a moment in this scripture passage. So, in the drinking of the water, look in John 6 while you're 
thinking about the drinking of water. Don't everybody get up and go to the refrigerator and get a glass of water here. <laughs> so, in the, if the drinking of water suggests a more intimate connection of water than the washing of it. Wouldn't you say? The, the drinking of it is, is a more intimate thing than just applying it to cleanse your body. Right? And, in fact, it produces a more powerful effect. Because you cleanse yourself, you've got to cleanse yourself again. Right? And with water, I'm talking about. Yeah. But, the drinking of it sustains your life. Mm -hmm. Keeps you going. Right? Yes, John chapter 6. Is that what I said? Uh -huh. Verse 53. I'm glad you're listening. Then said Jesus unto them, I'm in John 6, 53. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and what? Drink his blood. You have no life in you. Now I'm going somewhere with this, so hang on. I, I, I know I've got a few minutes left. We said drinking is a, 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 a suggests more intimacy than just the application of cleansing of water. We're likening spirit, water, and blood because that's our scripture. They agree in one, it says. We saw that the spirit regenerates and it renews. And it renews. So it regenerates first and then it keeps you going. New life. It's a new and living way. Hallelujah. So here we see Jesus said, unless you, you drink his blood, you have no life in you. Verse 54, whoso eats my flesh, drinks my blood, has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. That's our goal, isn't it? For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwells in me, and I in him. That's very important. All the benefits are in him. <coughs> Hallelujah. How do I do that? I got to drink his blood. Hallelujah. Well, Without a thirst, there's no drinking. Right? You have to be thirsty to go want to get something to drink. Well, we've got a thirst for him. Hunger after him. Hallelujah. Mm. Whoso eats my flesh, drinks my blood, those are the ones that have life. Well, natural life is nourished by food and water, is it not? Heavenly life must also be nourished by divine heavenly food and drink. His name is Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, think of it this way. You, you, you may have heard that somebody goes to hear a speaker, a motivational speaker, or a teacher, a class, and then they make the comment, I just drank it up. What are they saying? That that which they were taught, that which was expounded to them, they drank it. Hallelujah. We're talking about drinking his blood here, okay? We're talking about thirsting after it and drinking his blood. So, the one who thirsts to drink of the blood of Jesus knowledge of him, hungering for him, devouring of him, application of it. That's the one that will receive life in him. That's what he said. Or you could say his very disposition, a mingling of the nature, life of God Almighty, Jesus Christ. I mean, that's what the, the, the mingling of the blood is. That's why in, sac in, in ceremonies they drink blood, mix it with things. In, 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 I'm talking in worldly situations. When, when they copy in our covenant here, yeah. then they do these things because they think the life is the soul of the animal or the person. And so they want to mix as one with that strength of the other. 
Hallelujah. And so here, the one who drinks of his blood sits and listens, hungers, receives, digs deeper in it. Hallelujah. That one receives the disposition of the Lord. Isn't that what we're after? The nature of God? That's what makes us different from the world and other churches is that he changes us from within. It's not a set of rules and regulations. He changes me from within to thirst and hunger after him and love him and pursue him. Make him my Lord. Make him in charge. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yes. Well, the blood being the soul or the life of the body, we're to wash in him, obviously, to get saved. Wash in the water of the word, Ephesians says. In the blood of Jesus, in the spirit regenerating us. These are washings, but we must also live and abide in him. After that washing, lest we die. Hallelujah. Because, look in John, I'll close with this, John chapter 15. You should be in John already, yes. if you're following me. John 15, yes. verse 1 says, I am the true vine, yes. and my Father is the husbandman. This is Jesus speaking. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word. Isn't this what we've been talking about? Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That's the water. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, abide in me. That's that drinking of that blood, the life exchange, the mingling of the life. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. If you have a vine running on your fence, and you cut a piece of it off, and pull it away from the vine, it's going to die. Your life is in that flow of that vine, through the, through the vine. The blood if you please. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches, he that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they're burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, drinking of this blood, eating of that flesh, which is the word, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Hallelujah. That's good news, isn't it? Yes, amen. Hallelujah. So, what I'm saying this morning is, I must thirst. Thirst for what? Jesus. For the blood of Jesus. He said, if you don't drink my blood, you have no life. If I'm not thirsty for him, I won't want to drink it. I won't go to the movies instead. Maybe go play some sports game of some sort. Maybe go make money. I mean, those things are important to me. But he's got to be more important. I've got a thirst. i got a thirst. Now you check yourself and see. What's, a, what's important to you? What, what do you make time for? You know, whenever I was... Uh, date my wife, I made time for her. Mm -hmm. I might have been sleepy, I might have been tired. She was on the other side of the world, so her daytime was my nighttime. I might have been tired from working, but I still made time to talk, to commune. Hallelujah. I might not have had much money, but I still found a little bit to send her a gift here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, I'm just saying. You're going to do what's important to you. What's
what you thirst after. What do you thirst after today? To know who's going to win the ball game next? You're doing all your research on that? To know who, how you're going to make the most money in the stock market? You're researching all that? These things are not wrong in themselves. They're wrong when they usurp the authority that you need for God. Hallelujah. Jesus said you must abide in me. How do I abide in you? Drinking that blood. Drinking the sap from the vine, if you please. The sap that's flowing through the life of the vine, vine going into the branches, that's what I got to thirst after. That's what I got to partake of. How do I do it? Right here. Right here. I make time for him through this. Glory to God. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. Give us a heart, O oh Lord, to thirst after righteousness. Thank you for regenerating us. Thank you for renewing us today. Thank you for washing us with the water of the word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for rivers of living water flowing out of our innermost being. You said it, Lord. We believe it. We take it. We thirst after you. We hunger for you. You're the most important to us of anything, of anyone. Just lift your hands toward heaven. Father, we surrender afresh in the name of this morning.